Last but not least, this is question 12. Okay. Um, we're talking here about ultrasound, which is a method of, of measuring depth. Okay. It's also used to look at um, unborn fetus in, inside the uh, uterus. However, we're using it here to detect the depth. Now, simple calculation, really. We're told the speed. Notice that this is a higher speed than in air. Okay. It's because of our liquid particles um, are closer to are closer together than in air, and we're also told a time. Okay, 1.2 seconds. Not really sure why they've decided to go for the full word rather than just the the unit. We've got speed and time, and obviously you're being asked to calculate distance. All right, which, as we know, is just the product of this of time and speed. We've got 1,500 times 1.2, 1,800. Be careful. When you're measuring a distance using sonar or using any kind of echo, if your boat is up here, and this is the bottom of the ocean, we, our time begins when this wave comes out. It travels down, and then it travels back up again, obviously along the same line. I'm drawing them apart so that you can see them a bit more easily. So therefore, we've got a distance down and a distance up which is actually double the distance that we've calculated. We've calculated 1,800. That means our sound wave has traveled um, a total of 1,800 in going from top to bottom and back up again. To get our depth, therefore, we need to divide my distance, divide, by, uh, divide it by two, sorry, to get 900 meters. So be very, very careful with this step here. You would get one mark, really, for this and one mark for this in the exam. Okay. We're told our, the wavelength of our ultrasound. See how we're combining different units together. We've gone from um, distance and time suddenly to V equal F lambda. Okay. You're told the wavelength, five centimeters, and you're told the frequency, and this is something you've got to prove. Okay. This is the frequency. We've got to prove this. We know lambda here as well. This point may be one where you go, look up, I've got two bits of information, where's the other bit? Don't forget that you can refer back up here, okay? This information is expected to be used throughout the question, and actually your V is all the way back up there. We're told um, V, we know lambda, we want to prove F, and it's better had be this number here. Now this is where you might come into some trouble, because if you simply take are 1,500 and divide it by 5, then you will not get this number. You will get a, a number which is too small. Yeah? It, will give you up to five, it will give you 300. However, what we're missing here is the fact that this has been stated in centimeters. You should know that 5 centimeters is equal to 5 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. All right? And whenever we're using wavelength, we must state it in meters. We do not use it in centimeters. So if you found the first time that you didn't get this answer, the reason for that is probably because you didn't convert. Ultrasound waves are a longitudinal wave. They're a sound wave. And what that really is, is the idea of the particles moving together and then moving apart, moving together and moving apart. Each wave, each point in the wave, which is particles or these lines, which are together is a compression. Half a wave away is a rarefaction. So in this question, all you had to do was choose a point with, a C, with C and a rarefaction with R. To be honest, you could choose any of these Cs or any of these Rs. I would go for the ones next to each other. Uh, and if you fancy showing off, why not do a bunch of them? You're never going to get penalized for doing more here. We then go on to talk about reflection. Yeah, make sure you're drawing here because this is the kind of thing that again people look at they don't really understand what they're doing we've got a ship up here and we've got an object looking at it through our periscope now obviously I'm sure some of you have used these before we're using reflection so that the light can travel down here a couple of things to look for you need to draw two plane mirrors Okay, I think we can probably just about do that and you need, need to draw the path of the light. Making sure that when you're drawing the light, you are using straight 
lines. So therefore use a ruler. Again, we've talked about this a few times and I think you think I'm just being annoying. But if you don't um, use a ruler here, you will lose marks. Light travels in straight lines in physics world. The idea here is that I've got my two mirrors. This is a mirror and this is a mirror. They are plain, i.e. they are flat. The light is coming from my ship and into here we're then reflecting off that mirror, coming down and reflecting again and into my eye. Last part. All right, we have not done this yet in class, okay? I'm aware of that. However, it's something that you might, we will be thinking about. This is what's called a generator, okay? And it looks very much like a motor, which is something we'll talk about in the next couple of lessons. Um, the motor and the generator are very similar things. In a, genera in a, in a motor, we have um, electrical energy becoming kinetic energy. Yeah. In a generator, it's the other way. We have kinetic energy becoming electrical. Um, you may have played with something similar to this. You, there's a lot of lights which have a small um, spinner where you can rotate a coil inside a magnetic field and generate electricity. Just for now, be happy with the fact that these things here, yeah, these things Z, they're called slip rings. In a motor, there's an equivalent thing called a commutator. Do not worry about this just now. What's happening here in this uh, explanation, we generate a current by cutting what we call field lines. Between the north and south pole, we have field lines going from north and to south. And as this thing rotates around, it cuts those lines. As a result of cutting those lines, um, we get something called an induced EMF. Just like induced uh, magnetism, we cause an EMF to be produced in my wire. As a result of this rotation, the, e the EMF and current changes its direction. And that's why it's called alternating current. As I say for now, I don't want you to worry about this too much now because we're, we haven't learned this yet, but it's going to come up in the last couple of topics that we study.